Monks Herbert, uh, Bishop uh, Stephen Lee, don't be shy. Or you have uh, <laughs> more, uh, more uh, please, uh, don't come back. We would also give a warm applause to uh, Bishop Anton Jamnik, coming all the way from Ljubljana. From and uh, we uh, also expect Father Peter Stilwell to emerge at mm -hmm. maybe some point, because he's also a very uh, warm supporter of the Macau Rich Institute. It's really a great joy and an honor to welcome you uh, all for our symposium focused in this mission month on contemplation, mission, and martyrdom. I think 20 years uh, after the foundation of the Bacau Rich Institute, and we are very happy that the founding fathers are here. Uh, I think uh, they did not want to receive the official certificate, but we also, I think, need to give Father Louis Sequeira and Father Yves Gami also a very warm welcome. And we really wanted, uh, with this simple no, honorary membership, wanted, uh, and of course it was unanimously accepted on the General Assembly, wanted to uh, also show our deep gratitude for all you have done uh, so long uh, and we also want to also convey this simple token of gratitude to our patrons. We have chosen, we thought, uh, to steer the Rich Institute in the right direction. We need also patrons. So some time ago, also Bishop Stephen Lee, Bishop Anton Jamnik, and now Cardinal uh, Jean-Paul Hollerich have uh, graciously agreed to be our patrons. So, uh, some of you remember now Cardinal, he was great Cardinal just two weeks ago, Jean-Claude Hollerich was here uh, in one of the earlier battles in 203, then two years ago, when we were reflecting on education for the common good. Uh, he is now absorbed with the synod of the uh, business, but we do want to convey our uh, gratitude uh, to you especially, uh, but before doing that I would give the floor to our beloved uh, Bishop Stephen Lee. Thank you so much for coming. So dear brothers and sisters in Christ, I'm so happy to be here, or rather honored and to be invited to, to come here and uh, also, so first of all, on behalf of the Diocese of Macau, I welcome you all, especially all those speakers, as well as all those participants in, the, in this symposium. It is um, a very much honor for the Ritchie Institute to, to start in, in Macau, and uh, especially for all his scholarly work and research work, which has been uh, a great tr contribution to the church as well as to many societies, and then this is the, one of the our 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 aim precisely to have the rich institute here to contribute to all different kinds of spheres in the education, in philosophy, in the theology, uh, in the other ethics which the Macau Institute has been doing. Which uh, first of all, I I thank the presence of the Macau Institute uh, of the Ritchie Institute here. And at this time, I also thank some of the Taipei also, the Taipei um, the Institute, the Rich Institute of organizing here together with the University of St. Joseph. I thank all the organizers and to contribute such a such a beautiful project and uh, an event here in Macau. And also the, the the topic of this symposium is very um, very striking for me because martyrdom today in the church we celebrate the one of the first first martyrs right in the first century since in the Ignatius of Antioch but then today is martyrdom it reminds me this morning in my prayer I have thought about it martyrdom is not only the, for the history 
is still the church, but it also means something in the 21st century. This martyrdom with um, in the two, two different different ways. Still, amazingly, in the 21st century, such a modern centuries, physical martyrdom is still happening. Recently in India, in all the Africa, in all those countries, surprisingly, in the 21st century, with such freedom, we talk about human rights, of religious freedom, all kinds of freedom, still physical martyrdom still happens. It's, it's, it's a great human miseries. It means human miseries for such a modern century to still have this martyrdom. But of course, in the first, perhaps first century, we face a lot of spiritual martyrdom. Because the persecution of the church in so many formats now, persecution in the sense of the doctrine, the, doc the Catholic doctrines regarding marriage, regarding gender, regarding the life, wow, all these things, they are persecuting the church. And so that we have to defend it. But whether to physically with our life, maybe no, but, but we have to face a lot of sufferings, we, we face a lot of persecutions. And so, this time, with you in the symposium, he revealed something on the martyrdom from his history and to apply it, which is very interesting. And also for them, it's a mission. I would say that the martyrdom is a, is a kind of mission of the church, which is an external manifestation, which is so beautiful. The mission of testimony, which the, the mission always tried to do. The, the, the testimony in the past and also now and, and also in the future. And that's the, the meaning of the existence of the church, of the especially established by Christ, and also to carry on his redemption by the church. And through the missions, especially this month, and with, uh, with the extraordinary month of, of the missions, of the missionary work, and this is so meaningful for this symposium uh, to, to have this topic. And finally, in the, in the contemplation which I related to the all the mission martyrdom is an external manifestation, but then always the missions and martyrdom carry always in Jesus' heart and also in our hearts. And so this contemplation, what I mean is, is the love of God. All these things are based in the love of God, at the gaze of God, to follow Him and they're inspired by Him in all our activities, including, of course, our mission, including the martyrdom. And, uh, this is an extreme format, but still it happening. And uh, I'm sure all of us, with the uh, true Christians, we will carry on this uh, mission they carry that are entrusted to us by our Lord. And I'm sure all of us, if the case is needed, well, we welcome martyrdom in a kind of testament, external testimony of what the Church has been doing. So once again, thank you for your presence in the name of the Diocese of Macau, and also I wish we got be present in all throughout these two days of symposium, and then also God bless you all. Thank you so much. So a warm welcome. Now, if you say we, as you rightly said, we also have the Taipei Ritchie Institute uh, here, uh, represented by the Father Olivier Lachdiva. Uh, not everybody knows him, but here is well, the only one coming all the way from Taipei. Thank you. Uh, so, and we have strengthened our cooperation with the other rich institutes, so Taipei Rich Institute and also San Francisco Rich Institute. Father Ursula will be coming in December. And I speak also, uh, obviously, in the name of Father Jaroslav Durai. Now, uh, I would warmly welcome also Father Peter Stilbel among us and Vice uh, Rector, uh, Professor Albert Barbosa, also honors us with his presence. We thank Father Peter very much indeed for his strong support. As you may recall, we have signed a protocol between the University of St. Joseph and the Macau Rich Institute. <coughs> On the symbolic day, May 4th. Uh, so, and I think uh, we made some humble uh, progress. So, thank you very much. You have a very busy schedule. Uh, thank you for the people being with us and sharing your insights. Thank you. 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 Thank you.
Francis and uh, the Father Stephen Rothlin and the representative of um, the Taipei Ricci Institute. It is my honor to welcome you here in the name of the University of St. Joseph. Um, the theme that you have chosen is, is a challenging theme and when Father Stephen invited me to, or Stephen invited me to uh, say a few words, he said perhaps I could apply them to the university. Uh, and I was wondering how, how I could <laughs> In fact, I started by the idea of Martin and <laughs> in, in, uh, as a member of the first generation of students at the Catholic University in Portugal. I had a number of colleagues who were Jesuits and they were doing their theology uh, with us, which was rare. We only had two or three because most of the Jesuits were sent to uh, other universities. Um, and one of them, uh, Silvio, uh, shortly after he was ordained, he went to Mozambique, uh, where uh, just before the decolonization, the uh, war was, 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 black, was raging, and he, he died a martyr in his, uh, in his mission. So that was as close as I got to, to physical martyrdom. Uh, but it was interesting to see that uh, people were leaving to go out to the missions um, as then the Bishop of Dili a few years later went uh, got the uh, Nobel Prize for Peace. Um, but the martyrdom I was thinking, uh, how could I apply it to the University of St. Joseph. And I remember the other day, uh, a week ago, we, we had a, an issue here in Macau, uh, for those of you who are not here from Macau, in which the ruins of St. Paul were used as a backdrop for the projection of images to uh, evoke the, the 70 years of the region. People's Republic of China, and uh, so that naturally caused some, some, I wouldn't say ill feeling, but some discomfort on the part of the of the Catholic community, which responded very uh, in a tranquil manner, but uh, firm manner, uh, with a note uh, a few days later saying that these, although they are ruins. They are ruins of something which represents the Catholic presence here in Macau and should not be used abusively. And uh, that is true. That, um, that in this case, it's the College of St. Paul, uh, which is no longer with us for various reasons. But uh, with the University of St. Joseph, it is uh, something similar. We, we also see the interest of outside parties to project their ideological interests on this institution, which questions um, many people in high places. Why does the church invest so much time and money in the area of education, and namely in the area of higher education? Um, the suspicion the side of uh, the government, uh, ideological sections of our society is that somehow the church is trying through the university to obtain more, uh, more members, in other words a form of recruiting members to, to, to the Catholic Church. Um, without a doubt that if students and teachers come to the University of St. Joseph and are inspired by uh, Christian and Catholic ethos and become Catholics, that is a great joy for us. 
but uh, that is not really what is behind uh, our witness. Uh, our witness is something else. Um, it is ontological rather than ideological. So we are not uh, uh, facing one ideology with another ideology. In other words, we are not projecting our ideology uh, as an alternative to an existing ideology. I would say um, our witness is ontological. Uh, it is a witness to something which is true, whether we are here or not here. Um, but it's a witness to the reality of, uh, of God's love, as Bishop Lee was saying, which is manifest in ways which are not always explicitly um, explicitly the preaching of the gospel. Uh, the fact that we have uh, an academic community in which people uh, recognize themselves as colleagues and trying to understand the truth in their particular field of knowledge in which they are trying to help their students advance in their growth as human beings. Uh, this uh, dimension of a community that is caring communi community uh, in which people are followed in the various stages of their, of their development, this is something which leads us to very meaning of our existence as human beings and, uh, and that is true beyond all ideological uh, divisions um, so yes uh, we witness Marturia uh, so to speak is uh, to um, witness to this search for the truth and uh, then we have to deal with these uh, external uh, tensions. Uh, even last week we had someone from Beijing who came to tell us how we should run our uh, university because we were not going down the right path. And he brought a big volume of uh, President Xi Jinping's uh, thought to help us um, on our way and uh, to understand how we should develop. Um, and the week before we had had someone coming to us saying that uh, he had uh, uh, large numbers of uh, rioters from Hong Kong whose parents were not happy with them in, in Hong Kong universities because things were troubled, troubled in Hong Kong and they wanted to transfer them to the University of St. Joseph. So, uh, <laughs> so we, we get all these external solicitations, so to speak, uh, to, uh, which I feel are um, trying to distract us from keeping our eye on the ball, as they say, which is uh, to carry out our day-to-day -day job, work as a community, uh, care for one another, uh, try that our students uh, reach the best level possible when they leave. And so, uh, <coughs> Professor Alvaro was just telling me um, one of the issues that we face, uh, we just had an exhibition of our, was it our creative industries in, in one of the, uh, one of the big casinos here in the city and that there were various booths and uh, people were going around to choose uh, the kids were going around to choose which university they wanted to go to and they had questions uh, which had obviously been prepared at school uh, which they were to ask each of the booths and one of the questions was what, what is your ranking? Mm -hmm. Well, U.S. State's ranking uh, at that level is uh, going to be right down there because there are many things that we cannot uh, reach. Um, the, the OECD a few years ago um, challenged the international rankings of universities and uh, it said that these international rankings are set on a certain criteria which um, often make very little sense such as the number of 
of citations, a number of the, the size of your endowment funds and all those sort of things. Uh, and the OECD um, said we should try to develop a different type of ranking, a ranking which uh, would be able to measure what is the value added between uh, when the students enter the university and when they leave the university. In other words, if you have uh, a university in Burkina Faso or somewhere which is working with kids who are, um, uh, I'm not sure that Burkina Faso is the case, but I heard in a, in a, recent, in a, in a recent meeting of Catholic universities, a, a Catholic university from Africa, where all they could do was try to get the kids out of the civil war which was raging and keep them inside the university where they were safe. Uh, and so if you have a university which does that work and cares for, for, for the students so that when they leave they're at a level where they could eventually go on to some other university, you are probably doing much more than if you were working at Harvard where you are getting the creme de la creme of the, the best uh, young men and women from all over the world and who, who could probably do their, their studies without any input from the teachers just by themselves because they have all the skills and the qualities which have been given them by their family. So uh, that is uh, how I see the Catholic University here. We are working with the people of Macau. We are trying to help the people of Macau develop. And we are, some of them have limitations. Many of the ones who come to us are the ones who are not able to, or for family reasons or personal reasons, were not able to go to mainland China, which is giving huge scholarships for, for Macau and Hong Kong students, uh, or were not able to go to Europe. And uh, it is those, those are the people we are working with, and those are the people that we are happy with flourish and develop and, and uh, are able to uh, carry on uh, a life in which they have discovered their personal dignity and uh, are able to commit, contribute to the local community. Um, we were very surprised and uh, struck by the fact that a couple of months ago, I was just about preparing to go on holiday, I got a phone call from the BBC. Uh, the BBC World Service had just carried out a survey of its listeners and discovered that of its 500 million uh, listeners, um, about 60% of these listeners were connected to higher education, either as students or as staff, and uh, that they were not producing content for this large audience, specifically oriented. So they decided to uh, set up a series of documentaries on internationalized, internationalization in higher education. They contacted UNESCO and uh, through UNESCO they contacted the International Association of Universities and uh, for some reason or other they selected USJ as one of the universities they wanted to, to carry out a report on. And uh, from this side of Asia, there was one university from mainland China and, uh, and then uh, USJ. How we uh, hit the screens, I mean how, how we uh, realized that we existed, uh, and still to discover, but they had done their homework when they rang me up, they knew uh, a lot about us, so they obviously checked on our website and we seem to be of great interest to them and so they came last week and they did the filming and they tried to get two topics of, uh, of uh, work that is being carried out by us. One was uh, an outreach program which we have in the local Kolowan prison where uh, teachers from uh, social work go and teach inmates at uh, Colwine Prison uh, and um, 
they are granted the credits for what, what they study and when they come out from prison they can use those credits to complete their studies with us and we have just enrolled for the first time and now in September one of these students who came out from, from prison and he is now finishing his, his social work studies uh, and um, that was one of the projects. The other project was uh, the local mangrove forests which uh, were practically destroyed by the construction of the casinos and it was one of our researchers who carried out research supported by uh, FDCT, the local funding agency, uh, brought to the attention of the local authorities and published uh, with the support of the local authorities that public, uh, published on what still remained of the, of the mangroves. And uh, these mangroves uh, forests are now being rehabilitated and re-established. Uh, we have a small part to play in that. So these were things which the BBC picked up and thought, oh, this is interesting because it shows the university connected to the local community. I think that is uh, examples of our martyria, mm -hmm. our, <laughs> our care for the community, our care for the reality around us. And uh, I think that is also our mission. And uh, what was the third word? Contemplation. Contemplation. Yes. All this results from contemplation. Uh, theory, uh, uh, caring for the reality is, can only be a result of having contemplated reality and see, see <coughs> calls to our heart, calls to our care, calls to our attention. Thank you very much. Thank you very much uh, for sharing your um, insights. So, uh, very dear friends of the uh, University of St. Joseph and the Hyper Rich Institute and the Macau Rich Institute, we consider it really as a unique opportunity to uh, celebrate these 20 years uh, since the foundation of the Rich Institute in 1999, just before the turn of the new millennium. To choose Joseph, the house husband of Virgin Mary, as patron of a Catholic university and already in 1687 as patron of the church in China does not lack a certain irony. In an immensely complex cultural context, because we also may uh, many times in China wonder what's going on and in which direction we are heading. However, I think that a symposium like this will give us a unique opportunity to discern in a comprehensive way. Uh, and uh, Bishop reminded me because we, we have a very dense program, sorry for that, but I think we have to uh, pose also a certain challenge. What is the ultimate mission of a Catholic university like the University of St. Joseph today? And what is the mission of a research institute which, while independent, is closely linked to a mission of the Catholic University with a strong focus on ethics. We intend thus to take up the challenge, as Pope Francis asked us during this special month of mission, to reflect on the inspiring meaning of the encyclical letter Maximum Illud by Pope Benedict XV, right after the disaster of the First World War, and analyze the meaning of mission as the relevance of these terms seems to have evaporated, even among the so-called church people. And in order to be able to do what we do think is the best Ignatian tradition, recalling the mystical dimension of spiritual exercises of St. Ignatius Loyola. We think it's important to revive the contemplative dimension of mission, which also seems to have mostly faded away from many layers of the Church. So my teacher, Father Jean-Claude Gris, put it that 
Vidai Sertoy. He was talking about religious people. Uh, and unfortunately, sometimes it's true, we have lost this contemplative dimension. So, only with a fresh insight into contemplation and mission will also the inspiring witness of martyrs, as we should be reminded, as also today's martyrs, become meaningful and inspiring for us as they reveal the deepest meaning of faith, especially in the thought of St. Paul, which is the courage to trust. So, uh, Father Norbert Böwering just died, who spent, I think, 50 years about the thought of Paul. He said, faith, the best translation would be courage to trust. As not only the splendid church of the Mother of God collapsed into ruins, but also other impressive buildings and wisdom traditions may just simply collapse into a monumental ruin, as the sinologist Eric Zürcher characterized the state of Confucianism, we would like to explore in the best tradition of the founding father of the Taipei Rich Institute, Father Yves Raguin, lived from 1910 to 1998, how contemplation be a privileged door to deepen the understanding of Christian mission while getting into dialogue with other wisdom traditions like Confucianism, Buddhism, Taoism, without forgetting Islam. I think this is also the moment to thank, as I said in the beginning, to the bottom of our hearts, to our patrons, from the true power. So it's uh, Monsignor Jean-Claude Hollerich, the Cardinal, and uh, Bishop Lee, and Bishop Janik. So, therefore, uh, along with uh, Father Jaroslav Duray, I would like to now convey this simple small token of appreciation of our gratitude uh, to, to you really. We are deeply grateful that also sometimes in a moment of crisis you gave us uh, your warm support. Uh, thank you so much. Our patron, so. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. We feel also very privileged uh, from now, from the Rich Institute, to have strengthened our cooperation uh, with the University of St. Joseph, but also particularly with the Faculty of Religious Studies. So I feel very happy that Reverend Stephen Morgan, as the Dean of the Faculty of Religious Studies of USJ, now will challenge us as, uh, with his keynote speak, uh, which is focused on contemplation in a world of action. So we are living in this world of this, uh, of this first world and with the focus of the English Benedictine tradition of mental prayer. And of course we uh, were expecting also uh, some uh, link to the Ignatian tradition, he will not uh, overlook that, <laughs> so, for sure. Uh, it's death to Ignatius and the changing nature of Christian witness in the monastery and on the mission. I really would also like to uh, thank uh, uh, Reverend Stephen for his warm support to the Richard.